breaking down the quarter today with the city's uh, Tyler Radke alongside Daniel Newman of uh, Futurum Research. Guys, thanks for the help today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having thanks for me. Having uh, Daniel, let me turn to you first before we actually talk the stock. What what about the cloud division is under impressing people given what what is supposedly a very strong backdrop? Yeah, I think the question there almost needs to be reversed. The run up over the last 30 days was so impressive that I think the overall performance uh, it met expectations, but maybe it didn't uh, inspire that massive growth. I mean, doubled in du a double and triple digit growth in key investment areas. You had uh, cross cloud infrastructure, Gen 2 cloud, autonomous database, cloud at customer, and it's SaaS bets, uh, Fusion and NetSuite, both hanging in there at, with 20 plus percent growth rates right there with Salesforce and you know just lagging a little bit behind where Microsoft Dynamics 365 growth has been. So I'm not as sure that it's unimpressive as it was meeting what was expected, but also benefiting from that strong run up that often leads to a sell right after the news hits. Right, right. Tyler, was this just another example of coming in hot? You know, I, 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 I don't think so. I, I think if you look at the quarter, it kind of uh, was in line for the wrong reasons. Uh, currency was, was kind of the biggest driver. If you look at revenue on a constant currency basis, so removing the, the currency tail when they saw it, actually missed the low end of the guide. Uh, and I think, you know, investors are are trained to look through that, and, and that's kind of what you're seeing in the stock. And, you know, I think the, the optimism around Oracle has been driven by the fact that investors are, uh, you know, hoping to see this company go through a similar transition that you've seen Microsoft. And, you know, to really not see the, the revenue uh, performance coming in the quarter, I think that was uh, particularly discouraging. And then, you know, I think on the call, uh, really most of the time was, was spent reading through SAP wins rather than kind of addressing the, the key issues on the quarter. So, Daniel, does this show the limits of the kind of old tech trade that we saw perk up last week? I mean, there was that Barron's article a few weeks ago, and then there was the upgrade from Barclays that, that came. But when it comes down to it, we, we saw a certain amount of acceleration and strength from Qualtrics and from Snowflake. And the Oracle story in the cloud is just different. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes time is going to be the best uh, tell. And Oracle needs a little bit more of that in terms of its growth in Gen 2 cloud. Its first generation missed the marks. I was very critical of it. Um, but Gen 2 has done a lot better. I do want to see a bit more transparency, though, because I think the tailwinds could accelerate if uh, the company maybe followed Google's lead in the last quarter where there was more transparency. Uh, how is it breaking out between the infrastructure, which has sort of been the number everyone's looked at for cloud for a long time, but also the platform, the hybrid business, cloud at customers, they call it, and also the SaaS bets that are being made by Oracle. The company is in a lot of the right places, Carl, but some of the legacy business has been holding it up, and these big growth percentages could benefit from a little more clarity on how big that revenue actually is. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.